Maayong hapon. Kining Santos nga misa nga inyong madungog ug matanaw karong hapuna. Ito yung sa pagpahigayon sa hiniusang pwersa sa istasyon DXGN 89.9 Spirit FM o usab sa Facebook DXGN 89.9 Spirit FM o sa Davao Catholic Herald. Ano yung akita karon sa San Pedro Cathedral, Davao City, Philippines? Ano yung ang hamubong kasaysayan ni ining atong kasaulugan? Vicars for the Clergy National Convention. Ano yung daghan mga 159 ka mga kaparian sa Tibuok, Nasud, Pilipinas. Sa atong pagsaulog sa tuig sa mga pari o sa konsagradong tao, ang Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines, Episcopal Commission on Clergy, may pahigayon yung panagtagbo sa mga pari nga nagtitulo Vicars for the Clergy National Convention. Ang tema, Ministering to the Ministers as Servant Leaders in Communion for the New Evangelization. Ang pinasidugang dinapit ng ating pamaba, mao si Father Jamie o Jaime Noel Vislate, usa ka doktor sa psikolohiya. Tinood, matud pa, nga ang pari, nahataga na sa permanenting timaan, nga siya, Alter Christos, Laing Kristo, hangtod sa kahangturan. Apan na kinahanglan, usab, nga magpapadayo ng pagpalambo, aron mamahimong mabungahong tinunan ni Kristo. Pagahimoon kinikaron hapuna din sa San Pedro Cathedral, Davao City, Philippines. Adunay lima ka obispo nga muapil ni ini, sila ang pangulo ni ini nga itong kasaulugan, inubanan sa itong arsobispo, Romulo G. Valles. DD. Ang mga obispo mao si Bishop Rimando, Bishop Abel Apigo, Bishop Raul Dael, Bishop Ben sa San Pablo, Bishop Pamaliko Buenaventura. Kini ang inyong higala sa kangina si Sister Rica in atong hinayosang puwersa sa DXGN 89.9 Spirit FM o gusab sa Herald Catholic Catholic, uh, stage, Catholic newspaper din sa atong Davao City.
of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, today we join the whole church, the universal church, in celebrating the solemnity of the Annunciation. Today also we begin, or you begin, you start, your national convention of the Episcopal Vicars for the Clergy. So we beg the Lord and the Blessed Mother to bless us all, you delegates, to this very important national convention. Let us prepare then for this Holy Eucharist, 
by once again recalling to mind our sins, always deeply mindful of God's mercy and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly seen in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who desired that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in His divine nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. Is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with the child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your justice I kept 
the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and go goats takes away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me in holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight then i said as is written of me in the scroll behold i come to do your will o god first he says Sacrifices and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God 
to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will keep him in the throne of David, his father and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, our dear delegates to this National Convention of the Episcopal Vicars of the Clergy, uh, Brother Bishops, our dear Auxiliary Bishop of Davao, Bishop Rimando, and Bishop Ben Famadico of the Episcopal Commission of the Clergy, welcome to Davao, uh, Bishop Ben. And uh, with him on his right is the bishop-elect of Diocese of Tandag. He is a priest of the Archdiocese of Cagayan de Oro, Bishop Raul Dael. Bishop Raul. <laughs> Try to remember that when you think of bishop and see Bishop Dael, this is the first day that he has used the skull cup. And of course, uh, our, our very own, the Bishop-elect of Mati, Bishop uh, Abel Apigo. <clears throat> Bishop Ben, thank you for deciding and choosing to hold your convention. He just told me that it is a kind of the first one after so many years. Now, wala, but it is a revival of the convention. Thank you for choosing to hold uh, this convention here in, in Davao. Uh, Davaoinos would like in this, in this current days, use the tag uh, when you think of Davao. Life is here. Uh, 
They say that's the tag. Life is here in Davao. And uh, Davao also is becoming or has become quite quite uh, known and, and famous because it is the home of, uh, again, home of, correct, it is the home of the Philippine eagle, uh, the national bird, uh, and also it's the home of the President of the Republic. Uh. So thank you for choosing Davao, but I think Monsignor Masculino got the liking of having the convention in Davao when he saw the Archbishop of Davao as having the same hairstyle as he has. Uh, it is written there, National Convention of the Vicars for, for the Clergy. But we know very well that that is not the complete title. That's a kind of understandable shortcut. But that is, if I'm correct, the National Convention of the Episcopal Vicars of the Clergy. Am, am I correct? Huh? This, if you're all Episcopal Vicars, plus related personalities and institutions helping us and you function as Vicars for the Clergy. I, I'm underlining that because it is an opportunity, I guess, I can represent the bishops of the Philippines because the last time I checked, I'm, I'm the president of the CBCP. Uh, so I can, I can, in their name, thank you, really sincerely thank you for your work as Episcopal Vicars for the clergy because obvious, very obvious, uh, you have made our work lighter because the primary responsibility uh, is the bishop who cares for his priests. This is the first time that I'll make this confession, and I thought this is an opportunity to, to say this in the presence of the Davao clergy. You may remember, I forgot the title, but last year there was a document, a few pages, not, not, not thick, not, not much pages, a few pages <clears throat> about the ministry of the bishops and Pope Francis. I think it was it was last year. And I read it, the first like ten paragraphs. Wow, wow. So right away I did not finish reading it. I thought of distributing it to my priests in Davao. But when I resume reading it, the later part is about the work of the bishop for his priests. And then when I read it, I felt insecure. I felt a bit ashamed. I, I felt a lot of doing mea culpa. And I did not distribute the document to the clergy. Uh, but they can easily find it now. Uh, Google it, uh, Vatican web website. It, that is just to underline that I personally take it seriously, as, as all bishops do, our responsibility of caring for the priests. And after that seminar in Cebu, the National Conference on the New Ratio, all the more when, when we obviously saw the lacuna of ongoing formation that we have almost nothing about it here and there but no program of formation all the more i felt in cebu this is so much i i felt a bit embarrassed and inadequate and i said lord forgive me forgive us for not caring enough for our clergy but i think of you I think of you, vicars for the clergy, representing your poor bishops, frail bishops, limited bishops, and you are there to assist us in caring for our priests. That is why I would like, I repeat, this is an occasion, not just because I'm the Archbishop of Davao and the President of the CBCP, but personally, thank you so much for being with us as bishops. Again, helping 
in that very delicate and important task of caring for a priest. And that big task, I guess, that we would tackle uh, to craft a program or chart the days ahead, kahit na initially, what will we do together for the ongoing formation of our priest? I'm, I bet, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that this will not be done in this, this convention. Kay Manuroy pamanda sa Philippine Eagle. But at least we become very conscious that this is an important task and we will, I assure you, we will be with you in this God-given task of caring for the gift of the priesthood given to each and every priest under our care. We are happy to have you in my, in my list, uh, expected, uh, some, some are still arriving, all in all, including the Apostolic Nuncio who is coming, uh, 194 expected delegates. I'm happy that you are here in Dabao, the second biggest national convention, because only when you come that we have the trumpet. Uh, only. Kung wala pa mo, torotot lang amua. So thank you for choosing Dabao. But, but for this opening mass, for this opening mass, what is the Lord telling us in this liturgy, for us, for our clergy, in this wonderful liturgy of the solemnity of the Annunciation, especially from the reading of the Word of God, what, what are elements there that we can appropriate for ourselves? Vicars for the clergy, me as a bishop. I'd like to propose three realities, humbly, coming from the readings today. What are these three realities, which I think are there in the readings, three realities which are related to our priests, to you and me, and especially we who are given that unfortunate job of caring for brother priest. Quote unquote lang ng approach kay Lison. Makaupaw yun. May puntang akong vicars for the clergy. Pareha kanunay ni kanyad to Monsignor Abel. When he was appointed bishop, was tempted to write to the Holy Father, Your Holiness, Colon. Thank you for making one of our priests in Davao, Abel Apigo, as the new Bishop of Mati. But may I request that he may continue to be the vicar for the clergy in Davao. Uh, I'm sure the Nunciature would answer, sir. Are you out of your mind? It is a difficult task. I'm lucky in Davao, and I'll say it in front of, of Bishop Apigo, in front of the Davao clergy, some of them are here, that those with Bishop Abel, because he's an outgoing, or wala na, be careful the clergy, those who are with him, si Father Leone Espana, the one who read the gospel uh, this afternoon, they are by all means God gives to me as a bishop in dealing with our clergy in, in Davao. So back to what, what I said. What are these three things that I propose that we consider in dealing with our brother priests? Coming from me, that's my reading. First, I would like, and this is not earth-shaking, to take seriously the role of a priest in a Christian community as proclaimers of the good news from the gospel. I know ang tendency it's the I am the handmaid of the Lord. Pardon me, Mama Mary, but I, I, I like to see priests who takes on the personality of Gabriel. So inspiring, so definitive, so sure of the good news. Sometimes I get uneasy when I, I hear the presentation of like 
lights and shadows. Mama na papya, lights and shadows. Unya ang presentation mo equal. I, I, I think there should be strong bias that the light or lights will triumph. That we are truly so convinced that we are bringers, we are proclaimers of the good news. That in the Mass, when we say, the Lord be with you, that's a strong statement. No need of good morning. But when you switch to good morning, you bring your attention again to yourself. That is as if the whole thing depends on yourself. That, that almost impossible, daring, almost like, like a, a, a foolish confidence in the good news. Because there's so much dark news. Gabriel like in his confidence in going about his work that good will triumph. No matter what we plan, in the end, the Lord will accomplish his work. I, I wish our priest can, can recover this almost like blind, innocent confidence in the good news and power of the Lord in their lives. That's coming from the gospel. The second is really to rediscover a sense of sacrifice. Even the old type of sacrifice. That's in the second reading. Not the rituals, the blood of bulls and goats, and cows and cattle. And what is the sacrifice that is pleasing to the Lord? To do His will. In Davao now, we are finalizing our new assignments. Bishop George is the uh, chairman of the ad hoc committee on this thing about personnel. Is it always to please everybody? Hard work, committed work, but my work? Or is it having that attitude that I will do it even if I don't like it, but this is the way of the church. The sense of sacrifice. Pain and sacrifice to do the will of the church and the will of God. Even almost at no meaning at all, but doing the will of the Father. Even if mahuman na lang, matapos na lang yung assignment, you were still struggling. But I, 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 I believe, and now I can say it boldly because nahurot naman akong buhok. Maybe when I was 24 years old, 27, 28, 32, I cannot. But in the end, keeping, keeping this very high ideal that the priesthood is a sacrifice doing the will of the church valuing that keeping that as very important is the one that would give you peace and joy than having right away the meaning on what you actually do i celebrated my 42nd year as a priest uh, last monday so, uh, 42nd year. Jollibee lang ko. Akong pag-amang ko. No? Uh, kay wala ko tagaig budget ni Bishop George. No? Kapalit o Blitzo. No? But when I celebrated my 42nd year as a priest, I, I remember my parish priest, a Marinol, American missionary. And we look at him with all the colonial mentality that Americans are rich. Americans are, you know, all of, and here he was, perspiring, 
agonizing climbing up mountains had a very poor convento, not even a flush toilet, very poor convento. Truly physical sacrifice, but really looking back at my priesthood, I always wondered why this American was so happy in his life. When it was all physical, difficult work in Davao Oriental. And here, I think I cannot yet fathom me fully because the source of his joy, I think, he's dead now, by the way. Source of his joy is to be happy doing the will of God and the will of the church, no matter what, what happens below. And, and I think that takes a lot of praying, meditating, and kneeling in silence. If we can just recover that, I think together as priests and bishops, we would be well. Thirdly, in our convention and in our work as vicars for the clergy, coming from the first reading, it is also, a, by the way, a text for Christmas, King Ahaz. We are gifted as priests. So wonderful a gift. And I like to think that we are like Ahaz in the Old Testament. And the prophet said, Ahaz, please ask. You are so special to the Lord. Ask anything that you want. Blank check. Ask anything. And Ahaz said, no. I do not like to tempt the Lord. Because Ahaz had already a deal with the other kings. My plan B, my plan C, as Ahaz. In the priesthood, only one deal, only one source of happiness. But being Sugarista as we are, we have plan B. Plan C, may mga deal na. And that's what happened to Ahaz. The Lord got impatient with him. Useless. No. I'd, I'd rather bring in my guy, my son, the Messiah. But perhaps in a priestly life, we find consciously and consciously other deals, other covenants other mga agenda compromising the only important deal that we have said yes to the Lord in our priesthood. But brothers and brothers and sisters and brother delegates, uh, we come to this Eucharist because in the end, it is He who called us, who can see our hearts even if many times we don't even understand ourselves and we pray to him to the Lord Jesus our high priest that he would guide us and bless us vicars for the clergy to help our brother priest to help your bishops so that the pressure that immense beyond telling gift of the priesthood in us and in our brother priest would be kept so loved, so appreciated by each one. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord.
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our universal prayers. Brothers and sisters, through the faithful obedience of the Blessed Virgin Mary, God takes flesh among us. The mystery of the Incarnation calls us to be a loving Father through the incar Incarnate Son. Let us present to Him our prayers as we say, Risen Lord, he hear us. Risen Lord, hear us. That the Church may be seen and experienced as the incarnation of the working body of Jesus Christ through His renewed servant leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord hear, hear us. That through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our world leaders be guided with the light of truth and justice in their search for lasting peace among nations in particular here in our country. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear us. That those who are agonizing in their journey through life due to poverty may experience inner peace and joy through the reaching out of renewed Christians. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear us. That this five days gathering of the vicars for the clergy inspires the participants to follow more deeply the call of discipleship in the spirit of the fiat of our Blessed Mother. Let us pray to the Lord. A risen Lord, hear us. That many young people of this generation may be encouraged to generously say their fiat to the invitation to follow the risen Lord in the priestly and religious way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. A risen Lord, hear us that our beloved dead may go forth into God's peace and rejoice forever with Mary and all the saints, in particular all those vicars for the clergy who have gone ahead of us. Let us pray to the Lord. A risen Lord, hear us. Father of the Incarnate Word, we bring our intentions before you, the fabric of our daily lives, made holy by your Son, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering, so that she who is aware that her pilgrimage that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son, may rejoice to celebrate His mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men, and for men's sake, by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit, lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb that the promise to the children of Israel might come about and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with His Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May He make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, 
and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
this stand. Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to obtain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Representing our city mayor, Honorable Sara Duterte Carpio, let us all welcome City Councilor Mabel Sunga Acosta to welcome our delegates. Mayong gabi sa tanan. Mayor Sara Duterte is very much honored and happy that she got this invitation to give you a welcome message. However, she cannot be with us tonight, but she sends her warmest regards. Please allow me to read to you the message of our mayor. To the Most Reverend George Rimando, Auxiliary Bishop of Davao, Most Reverend Benaventura Pamadico, Most Reverend Abel Apigo, Most Reverend George Rimando, Romulo Valles, Archbishop of Davao, all the important personalities to all of us here once again maayong gabi on behalf of the city government of Davao I would like to welcome all the bikers and members of the clergy gathered here for this year's bikers for the clergy national convention we are honored that you have chosen Davao City as the venue of your gathering and we hope that you will enjoy your stay. Sabi nga ni Archbishop, you visit daw the Philippine Eagle. Allow me also to congratulate the Archdiocese of Davao for hosting this year's convention. The gospel works wonders like perfume, its essence, its testimony, appeals to our senses, appeals to our soul. But to the lost who have not heard of the good news, evangelists serve as alabaster jars to pour out the love of Christ among the hearers of the word. That is genuine evangelization. The kind that is not just seen and heard, but felt. The kind that has the intervention of the Holy Spirit more than the influence of man. As vicars, God's vessels of the good news, I am in hopes that Filipinos will receive that undying faith in Christ through your ministry. And through the trappings and difficulties of the modern times that have tested man, may you not grow weary in showing compassion to those who have fallen from grace and to not grow weary in walking with the weak and the wounded. This gathering testifies how the progress of a country is also based on its spiritual institutions. In the expansion of God's kingdom, the city government of Davao 
is with you in climbing mountains and in crossing oceans to share the faith, to share the promise, and to share the love. Thank you and once again, congratulations. Welcome to the city of Davao. Sarah Zimmerman Duterte, City Mayor of Davao City. Salamat po. Let us welcome Monsignor Ramon Masculino, Executive Secretary, CBCP Commission on Clergy. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Romolo Valles, Archbishop of Davao. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Buenaventura Pamadico, Bishop of San Pablo and Chairman of the Episcopal Commission on Clergy. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Abil Apigo, Bishop elect of Mati. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Raul Dail, Bishop elect of Tandag. And Your Excellency, Most Reverend George Rimando, Auxiliary Bishop of Dabao. My dear Episcopal Vicars of the Clergy, members of the Commission and Clergy of the different dioceses, religious men and women, my, our dear guests and friends, the local government officials who are here with us, our dear people of God of the Archdiocese of Davao, and all the guests and brothers and sisters who are present, it is indeed good evening to be here. It is a good evening to share with one another the grace and the blessing of God that comes to us to the celebration of the Eucharist as we open our national convention. It is indeed a good evening because we are together on this in our desire to minister to our brother priests. On behalf of the Episcopal Commission and Clergy, headed by our Chairman, Most Reverend Buenaventura Famadico, we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude. It is said that gratitude flows from the recognition that who we are and what we have are gifts to be received and to be shared. It is in the spirit that we would like to thank and also share the blessings we have received tonight to one another in a special way to His Most Reverend Romulo Valles, Archbishop of Davao, for breaking the word to us, for making us recognize and realize that we are here to proclaim nothing more, nothing less than the good news, to be able to share to one another the spirit of a sense of sacrifice and support each other in a special way to be more united and focused in our desire to minister in union with him who continue to minister to each one of us. It is in this vein that also we would like to express that gratitude to the Archbishop of Davao and in the spirit of that gratitude we would like to give a token of our appreciation to be given by our Chairman to His Excellency Most Reverend Romolo Valles for officiating and welcoming and sharing with us and modeling for us how it is to minister to our brother priest. Dear Archbishop, thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, 
let us all welcome Bishop-elect Abel Apigo, Bishop of Mati. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters, and uh, welcome to all our delegates, the Episcopal Vicars of the Clergy National Convention. We have officially opened our convention with a solemn liturgical celebration, the Holy Eucharist, which is the most fitting way of opening our five-day convention. In the name of the Archbishop of Dabao, Post Reverend Romulo G. Balies, D.D., I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the following. This is just a quick. To the Honorable First Counselor, Honorable Abel Songa Acosta, thank you so much for conveying the message of our Honorable Mayor to the delegates and to all of us. Thank you very much for the warm welcome with all the double venues. <laughs> to the choir of the Ascension of the Lord Parish and the wind instruments, thank you for making our liturgy more solemn and meaningful. <laughs> to all our seminarians who serve at the Mass, to our mother butlers who help us in our in uh, the vesting uh, area. Thank you uh, so much. <laughs> to the people that work at the San Pedro Cathedral, headed by Monsignor Leonardo Vicente, thank you so much for preparing everything to make this liturgy meaningful to all of us. <laughs> to all the priests and priests of Davao who concelebrated, thank you very much for your support as mentioned by the Archbishop of uh, Dabao. And of course, in the name of the Archbishop, I'd like to recognize the presence of Most Reverend George B. Remando, our Auxiliary Bishop, Most Reverend Joseph Bishop-elect Raul Dael of the Diocese of uh, Tandag, and uh, above all, Most uh, Reverend Buenaventura of Amadico, the chairman of the CBCB Commission on Clergy. All this I say in the name of our Archbishop. Thank you, thank you uh, very much. <laughs> After the final blessing, we change our vestments there at the vesting area and then buses are parked there, the other side of uh, the road, fronting the cathedral. And then right away, the, the motor cops will bring us to the University of Immaculate Conception where the city of Dabao and the local church of uh, Dabao will host you with our simple preparation, our dinner tonight. Thank you uh, very much. Please all stand. I'd like to request my brother bishops to join me in blessing you as we conclude this Holy Eucharist. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bless the name of the Lord. Now, now and, and forever. forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made, who made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This holy sacrifice of the Mass, this holy Eucharist is ended. Let us all go in peace to continue loving and serving the Lord and His people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Mga ka-spirit, padayon mo nagpaminaw din sa ato ang kasaulugan. Opening mask to sa dipahigayon o ipahigayon nga Episcopal Vicars for the Clergy National Convention. Ani akita din sa San Pedro Cathedral o isipag sa ulog sa tuig sa mga pari o mga konsagradong tao, ang Catholic Bishop Conference of the Philippines Episcopal Commission on Clergy nagpahigayon ni ining panig panagtagbo sa mga Episcopal Vicars gikan sa nagkadaiyang Archdiocese o Diocese sa Pilipinas. Ang tema mao, ministering to the ministers as servant leaders in communion for the new evangelization. Ug ang uh, pidasidunggang dinapit alang ni ining uh, event mga ka spirit, mao si Father Jaime Noel Dislate, usa ka doctor of psychology. Kinsa magpasabot sa katuyuan nga tinuod nga ang pari Nahataga na sa permanenteng timaan nga siya alter Christos, laing Kristo hangtod sa kahangturan. Apa na kinahanglan o sabsiya o mapadayunong pagpalambo, aron mamahimong mabungahong tinunan ni Kristo. Ang lima kaadlaw nga panagtapok mga ka-spirit paghahimuon sa Waterfront Insular Hotel, syudad sa Davao. Sugod karong adlawa, hangtod karong biyernes, Abril 13. Busa, iampo na ito nga magmalampuson kini nga panagtigom. Matod pa sa humilia ni Arsubispo Valles, nagpasalamat siya nga gipili ang Davao Easy Venue ni Ining Talagsaon nga Higayon because according to him, life is here and uh, not, not just because because this is the home of the eagle or Philippine eagle but this is the home of our president gipasalamatan usab niya ang vicar sa ilang waypuas nga pagtabang sa mga obispo ang episcopal vicars mga ka spirit yang giingon kaganiha mao ni sila ang ang nag-assist sa promosyon sa kaparian diha sa ilang tagsa-tagsa ka archdiocese og dioceses og niingon siya nga adunay gisulat si Pope Francis uh, kabahin sa responsibilidad sa Episcopal Vicars. Maunang ingon siya nga he takes seriously the responsibility of caring for the priest. Aduna po ay draft nga program ang gihimo or uh, katuyuan ni ining panag panagtigom nga makahimo o program o kung unsa himuon sa promosyon sa mga pari. Labi na gayod under the care of the bishop. Expected 194 ang muabot sa panagtagbo gikan sa nagkadaiyang simbahan dinhi sa Pilipinas. Pagkahuman ni ining Santos nga misa mga ka spirit, adunay uh, opening program of course inuban na sa ilahang fellowship dinner. Realities of being priest before we go, una priest or proclaimers of the good news. Ikaduha, gipasabot ni Yanong Muloy that he will discover types of sacrifice that is pleasing to the Lord. So, alang kaniya, importante nga ang mga pare, muhimo sa kung unsa man ang ipahimo sa ila sa ginoo o kung kiniman, kinahanglan ang sakripisyo. Ikatulo, we are gifted as priests, so wonderful as a gift. Matod pa niya. Busa mga ka-spirit, labi na sa brother delegates ni Yanong Muloy sa Kaparian, Episcopal Vicars nga naakaran sa Archdiocese of Davao. Welcome kamong tanan. Ugdagang salamat sa pagpili sa among dakbayan is a venue sa panagtigom karong tuiga. Sa makausa ni Ingo siya ng muloy na ang ginoo ang natawag kanila o maskin pag ikapila. No? Ikapil, even if many times that they will not understand themselves, they will continue to serve the Lord. O kita nga mga laiko atong iampo atong kaparian, dili lang ang atong obispo, Episcopal Vicars, labi na ang mga konsagradong tao alang sa kahimayaan sa atong ginoo. Daghan pang updates mga ka spirit atong paminaw ng Ambi GN alas 7 sa buntag ang kasikas alas 4 sa hapon. Ang programa maraming kwento, kwento ng ordinaryong tao 1 to 3 PM Monday to Friday. Uban sa iniusang puwersa sa Davao Catholic Herald newspaper o DXGN 89.9 Spirit FM ang Katolikong Radyo sa atong Archdiocese sa Davao. Ako si Cheng Vilog o kini ang special coverage sa National Convention on the Episcopal Vicars of the Philippines. Ako si Cheng Vilog. I herald.